Hello and welcome to the third instalment of our Investment Insight series, Magellan Minutes. We aim to bring our investors relevant, timely and thought-provoking investment insights all in around 10 minutes. It's been great to see the positive feedback we've received since we launched the series a year ago. A lot has happened since we caught up last December with the vaccine rollout now well underway globally and also the effects of the stimulus packages washing through the system. From ESG to infrastructure, luxury to financials, we'll discuss the issues and developments in the sectors and the stocks in our global portfolios. My name is Jennifer Herbert. I am Key Account Manager at Magellan. And today I'll be speaking with Magellan's co-head of franchises, Hannah Dickinson. And we'll be discussing the risks to brands in China, the impacts of this on our portfolio stocks, and how a company like Starbucks is navigating this environment. Thanks for joining us, Hannah. Thanks, Jen. China is an important part of the investment thesis for a number of stocks in the Magellan portfolio. It's a market that presents compelling opportunities for Western brands, thanks to the rise of the middle class. But it's also a market that presents unique risks for investors. Can you talk about some of those risk factors that you're monitoring? It is a market that presents unique risks. I would say in the tech space, a lot of the concerns we have are around regulation at the moment, but in franchises, what we're really monitoring right now is geopolitical risk. So when Trump was in power, a lot of the focus was on the trade war. But now we've got countries probing on the origins of COVID-19. We've got concerns around human rights abuses in parts of China. And we've got a number of te Chinese tech entities being added to trade blacklists by the US. So tensions between China and the West are still running high. And it does it does mean that brands can get caught up in these sorts of things from time to time. We've seen headlines about tariffs being imposed on Australian agricultural exports in China, impacting ASX listed businesses like um, Treasury Wine Estates. Are these sort of things happening to brands from other Western countries? Yes, uh, it's not unusual for brands to be caught up in a bit of diplomatic football. So Treasury Wine Estates is an example of you know, an industry-based uh, penalty that was applied by the Chinese government in the form of tariffs. But we've also seen more specific targeted attacks against specific brands. So one example that comes to mind is H&M, the Swedish retailer. So they were subject to bo boycotts recently in China. I'll just rewind a bit back to last year when allegations surfaced around some human rights abuses and forced labor in the Xinjiang region of China, which happens to produce about a fifth of the world's cotton. So at that time, a number of Western brands came out with statements on their websites, basically expressing concerns around human rights abuses in that part of China and really distancing their supply chains from, from Xinjiang. So, you know, it wasn't much of an issue at the time, but if you fast forward to March of this year, a number of Western countries, so the US and the European Union, they came out with sanctions against a number of Chinese officials in, re in relation to that issue. Within a few days, H&M found itself basically banned from a number of third-party Chinese e-commerce platforms like Alibaba and JD.com. And at the same time, there were social media posts circulating with statements from H&M's website from last year about the Xinjiang issue. Uh, and, th and those were accompanied by calls for a boycott. So what has the fallout been for H&M and have there been other Western brands that have been caught up in that controversy? So the fallout has been pretty brutal for H&M. I don't think their sales have recovered yet and there could be permanent damage to brand equity for them in China. There were other brands, other Western brands that were caught up in the controversy. So Nike and Adidas, for example, they, they actually lost a number of, well, a number of key opinion leaders who they work with in China terminated their contracts with them. So they did face I would say more of a short-term impact, but luckily none of the companies in Magellan's portfolio have been impacted by this, this, this action, but it does really highlight some of the risks that they face when they're operating in China. Absolutely. And what are some of the key learnings that investors can take away from these events? I think Western brands are in a really difficult position, Jen. On the one hand, they've got this 
kind of core cohort of Western consumers who are becoming increasingly attuned to some of the issues along the supply chain and they're wanting to express their values through the brands and the products that they purchase. Um, and so they're holding brands accountable to, to their supply chains and those supply chains are becoming increasingly convoluted. Then at the same time, you have brands becoming more reliant on Chinese consumers as a source of growth. And those Chinese consumers, they're getting wealthier every year and they're becoming much a much more important part of the valuation of, of, of these Western brands. So they have these two consumer cohorts who have perhaps different values, different cultural norms, different ways of thinking about things. So they don't always align, but they have to please both. And at the same time, they don't want to compromise on their own values. So they are in a difficult position. And I think as investors, we have to be really conscious of those risks. We have to monitor them as much as we can. Um, and we have, we have to try and make sure that the portfolio of stocks that we own is diversified enough and, and those risks that we're taking are not correlated. How are you monitoring the risk level to some of the brands in the portfolio and making sure that those risks aren't correlated? We're in close contact with the management teams of our portfolio companies. We're talking to really high calibre experts on geopolitics and we're working quite closely with the macro team at Magellan internally to put together a formalised framework on how we think about China geopolitical risk. And that framework, it's detailed, but Really, to simplify it, it comes down to two parts, the likelihood of a negative risk event occurring and then the impact of that risk event happening. So Starbucks has exposure to China, but it's also been a great performer for us. How does Starbucks fit into that framework and, and are we concerned about the risks with China? Jen, I think the likelihood of Starbucks being targeted is much lower than it is for, some, for a company like H&M. There's a few reasons for that. One of them is just simply, you know, Starbucks is in the coffee industry and they don't have exposure to the sorts of issues that H&M does, you know, the, the Xinjiang um, cotton issue. But also Starbucks is a really important contributor to China's economy. They've been investing there for 20 years. They employ over 60,000 people across the country and they add a lot of economic value to China. So I think the you know the other side of it would be you know looking at it from china's perspective it's not going to be as easy to target a company like that and then in terms of impact you're right starbucks does have material exposure to china it represents about 11 percent of revenue today but more importantly about 40 percent of its future growth in in our model so it is material but we think it doesn't have the vulnerability in terms of its distribution platforms that a company like H&M does. You know, they operate, they own a lot of its, their stores, they operate them themselves. So they can't just be taken down overnight. So that's something that gives us a bit of comfort. And I think overall, we feel really comfortable with our investment in Starbucks. Hannah, thank you for your insights today. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to the distribution team at Magellan and feel free to share this update with colleagues and clients as you see fit. Thank you.